Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be covering something quite specific. It's mainly for my purpose, not really necessarily for others, but like mainly for me, just because this topic's like, it's not complicated, it's just, it's just long, right? So like, this is comparative statics, which is, oh my god, my chair is so squeaky. Jeez, okay. Uh, sorry for that. What's this talk? Okay. Yeah, so this is comparative statics, which is basically comparing um, like the rates of change or how something changes when a variable is changed. So like, for example, we can see here how it does capital change when there's a change in price for capital and stuff like that, uh, which is why it's called comparative statics, because you have things that you can compare between. And this was one of the problem set questions and I just didn't understand for the longest time. So I'm just worried that for my exam in January, I'm going to forget how to do it. So this is like a reference for myself, for future Ivan, so he doesn't fail. So yeah, this is going to be a, a long one, but feel feel free, honestly, feel free to just stay and, and watch. I'm going to make it public because maybe some of my course mates might find this helpful. So yeah, let's just, let's just get straight into it. I've wasted enough time. So... The question here says the firm seeks to minimize costs of product producing a given level of output Q. Um, always check for if it's minimized or maximize. Uh, production function is Q equals F of KN. You can just write that. It's pretty generic, to be honest. Because you have your function of capital and labor. N is labor because L is a Lagrangian in this case. That's why. And then it says the production function is strictly concave. So that means the production functions like that, because that's a concave function. Convex would be like that. And in addition, the marginal products of both factors are always positive. Okay, so we can say the marginal productivity of capital is positive and marginal product of labor is also positive. Um, I'm also just going to write f of k and f of n, not f, mpl, sorry, npn, which equals f of k, because these basically mean the same thing, because your marginal production comes from the production function anyway, so it's just f in this case. k, always positive, I'll just highlight that. And the second order partial cross derivatives are also positive. Okay, so second order cross partial, cross partial. So that means f of k n uh, and f of n k are also both positive. Okay. Um, and it's also given us the wage rate as W and the price of the unit of capital services is R. And then the fact prices are logically given, which basically means that they're um, they're like a constraint because they're factors that don't directly affect it. So like, think of it as your ISO cost, and then you've got that. So this is like your production, this is your ISO cost. So that's why it's exogenous. Okay, so we have this, which is the production function. We also are given indirectly the, the demand for capital and labor, which is just your, your cost function. So. That would be WK, no, not WK, RK plus WN is equal to cost. I'll put total cost because it is. And then the first part is asking us to write the Lagrangian. This is pretty simple in this case. If you don't know this, Ivan, you're kind of an idiot. Okay, so let's just do it here. I'm just going to fast forward it because like it's not really necessary to, to like do it. I have a video of Lagrangian if you want to watch it. So yeah. Okay, so I basically written out the Lagrangian. I kind of did the second part because it's just find the first order conditions and that wasn't too bad. Basically just partially differentiate with respect to K and then Lambda and then you get your R, but obviously we're not given a function for the production function, so we're just left with f of k and f of m. So I've just kind of left it there because you can't really substitute it into lambda because you just fall into a loop. So I've left it there. So for part three, this is the part where I got really confused and I was like, what the hell is happening? 
but basically it says by totally differentiating the total first order conditions show that it is possible to express k n and the Lagrangian multiplier as implicit functions of r w and q so what you want to do with these types of questions is see you know like what the what you want to express it as so it says implicit functions of r w and q that basically means that everything on your right side should contain r w and q because you want your jacobian on the left and then on the right side things for you to basically substitute in and use Cramer's rule to find the partial derivatives which is what you do in part four so what we want to do is essentially totally differentiate these okay so um i actually messed up in one of the parts it, it's not going to be part of the video just because it'll confuse myself but basically what i did was um i accidentally kept these in the equation these are just notations these aren't part of the equation so i accidentally had like one plus something right but um essentially what you do is you find the total derivatives here and then you bring the endogenous variables which are these uh, to one side and the exogenous variables on the other side so you get basically two split parts and then what you can do is basically write them out in jacobian form and then coefficient form or these are the coefficients and these are the derivatives and you simply do that by having a look at um what you can basically factor out and you've just got to remember that if your first ones if you put dk here then all these have to be the what the coefficients for dk so you can see here here and here just keep that in mind those have to be the same otherwise it won't be right and you can check that using matrix multiplication and essentially after you've done that is you find the determinant for the matrix so i've quickly just written it out here i don't use that plus expansion for three by three because it's too complicated sorry for my really squeaky chair i just can't yeah i don't know anyways um yeah so you find um, the determinant for the Jacobian, and then you can use Cramer's rule to basically solve the partial derivatives, which is what part four wants. So yeah, I'm just gonna find the Jacobian real quick and I'll get back to you guys. Okay, so I've just found the Jacobian, and basically what you wanna do now is find the, the sign of the determinant of the Jacobian. And you can do this via the information that's given in the question. So we're told that the production function is strictly concave, which basically means that f of kk and f of nn have to be negative. And then we're just clearly told that f of k and f of n are always positive, And that f of nk and kn is also positive. So using that information here, we can basically put it into this in a theoretical or interpreted way so essentially what we can say is that the negative sign here so it's negative multiplied by f of k squared so f of k is positive so that's just positive and then multiplied by f of nn which we've just said is negative because it's a strictly concave function the production function is sorry so it'll be negative and then we'll have minus um negative because of the negative sign and then fn squared is positive and then f of kk is negative again because we just said the production function is strictly concave and then we can have plus um f of k and f of n are both positive so positive positive and then f of nk is positive as given in the question and then once we simplify this down, it's just basically positive, positive, because two negatives make a positive, and positive. So it suggests that our Jacobian is positive, so more than zero. And then once you've done that, basically find your partial derivatives by using Cramer's rule. So I'll do one, and then the rest is pretty self-explanatory. So if we want to find, I don't know, suppose you want to find, let's look at the question, um, dk by dr. What you want to do is basically set dw and dq to zero. So let's say let dw and dq equal zero. This essentially changes the whole question. Well, not really. It basically tells us that these equal zero. Oops. And then in order to use Cramer's rule, we're going to have to basically find a partial derivative first, so set the current rule to partial derivatives by dividing this 
by this or dividing all of the three things by dr. So it basically comes, I'm just copying and pasting so it's a little bit quicker. So once you've divided everything in the um, in this vector by dr, what you want to do is then just use Cramer's rule to solve it. So again, using Cramer's rule, you basically find a determinant of this using these values and then divide it by the Jacobian, the determinant of the Jacobian. So Cramer's rule for dk dy or dk dr, sorry, is equal to the determinant of 1, 0, 0, and then f of k and then f of k and f of n. And then you define you basically find the determinant of this. And then after you divide it by the determinant of the Jacobian. And then this will give you a certain equation. And again, you can just use the values or the information from the question to determine whether it's a positive, negative value. And then now basically tell you whether um, it will be negative or positive and how a certain value will change the, the value of capital when there's an increase in, in price for capital, basically. And you do that for every single one. So you do the same thing. So you set the dr equal to zero and dq to zero to find dw and you set dr dw to zero if you want to find dq and that's essentially it so yeah hopefully you found this helpful and it wasn't too confusing but yeah see you later